Marty Smith, ESPN College Football Reporter, joins us here on Big Board Sports as promised, 104.5 The Team, ESPN Radio. I love my college football. I got my entire bowl sheet in front of me. I got like 19 more games to pick. <laughs> a lot to go here. Four games today. We had a bunch of them yesterday. To me, it's a lot of fun. And then we get to the build up to the, to the big day, which will be New Year's Day. And we get to the final four. And Marty joins us here on Big Board Sports in Albany, New York. Good morning, Marty. Roger Weiland, Chris Honorado. Thanks for a few minutes. What's up, fellas? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Well, yeah, we're we're fine. I'm just Raj, trying to... give Marty the background on your your bowl pool here with your dad. Yeah, so I'm I'm twelve and nine, and you know the way it works, Marty. I put up the highest number on the team that I feel like is going to win, the lowest number on the teams that I'm not really sure about. It's very difficult to do it, and I've been doing it for my dad in Hempstead, North Carolina, for a number of years, and and I never fare very well. And he brags about how his son is a sportscaster <laughs> in Albany, and he's going to win this thing. <laughs> Marty, we aren't even close. I'm at the bottom of the barrel. I need your help. Uh, I was just uh, dapping up Damian Harris, the running back from Alabama. Nice. Uh, the boys were in there. They just got done uh, doing their media session. Clemson was here this morning. As for picking games, fellas, look, man, I I get asked by fans all the time, man, who you got? Who you picking? <laughs> they pay Herb Street all them millions to pick those games. I just stay out of it. I try to give you the information. So that you can make the most well-informed decision that you can make. Yeah, and I stay out of the picking game. It's, just, it's asking for disaster. It's hard because twelve and nine is not that bad at this point. No, not that bad. no, not that which bad. Which team man. did you give? Which team did you give the most weight? Right. Uh, uh, yes, yesterday, I had I had thirty-five points on Florida State. Who got forty-one for you? Uh, though? Forty-one already went to uh let's see 41 went to florida atlantic mm. oh got that one come to the sau got that one all right Kiffin. yeah Kiffin ball yeah. i thought he signed a dead gum 10 years i deal. know how about <laughs> that how about that but obviously the build up all these bulls until you get to the to the final four how good should the final four be marty uh come monday at five o'clock and then eight forty five i think two games that everyone who follows college football is looking forward to absolutely i mean in my estimation it's the best matchup that we've seen yet on paper um I can't wait to watch both of them. Of course, I'm here at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. I have Bama Clemson for the third straight year, and it was funny. I asked, we can start there. I asked Brent Venable just a bit ago, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, what is the biggest difference in having a month to prepare for Nick Saban's offense, of course now uh, the offensive coordinator being Brian Dable, uh, versus having a week for the past two years to prepare for mm-hmm. Lane Kiffin? Uh, and we, I guess we'll call it Lane Kiffin. You know, Sark was kind of the guy last year in the Natty, but you guys understand what I'm saying. The difference in a month and a week, and he just laughed and said, "Less, uh, more sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, hell, I wish we had a week. But uh, it's going to be a, an amazing game. It's fun to listen to the players and their perspectives on each other. Uh, the great running back for Alabama, Damian Harris, uh, said to me, look, there's no secrets in this, man. We know what they do. They know what we do. Uh, we've been here before, and this time it just happens to be a semifinal versus uh, the national championship game. Uh, as for the other side at the Rose Bowl, uh, you get the best player in college football going against an unbelievable defense uh, with Smith and the boys over there at Georgia. Um, I think it's going to be imperative for Georgia to run the football. They can. They have an unbelievable set of backs. And if they can run the ball and control the clock and keep the ball out of Baker's hands, that is their best opportunity to win that game. I mean, you're talking about one of the most explosive offenses in football, in college football, uh, in Oklahoma. Underrated offensive line. Those guys do a great job if you watch them on tape. They don't get enough credit, but it's going to be a killer game. Uh, both of them are. You know the voice. He's Marty Smith, ESPN's college football reporter. Marty, when we had you on uh, in the middle of September, and, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming back on with us here on what I know is a busy week for you, you were praising Clemson's defense. And I think somewhere along the line this season, I, I know that the number one seed, 
And I've heard a lot of experts picking Clemson to not only beat Alabama, to but to win the whole thing. I just feel like from a national landscape perspective, like the Tigers just aren't getting the love a defending national champ should be. Is that because they're underdogs? Yeah, I mean they're the number one. They're the number one seed in the in the tournament, and they're coming in as underdogs according to Vegas. So, you know that that's certainly that's the the most glaring example of your point. Um, look, man, their front seven is is unbelievable, and I did say that to you guys before. And certainly, I mean, you talk about three All Americans on the defensive line, and. I, I asked Venables that this morning as well, and I spoke this morning with Christian Wilkins, one of those All-Americans. I spoke this morning with Cleveland Farrell, another one of those All-Americans, and they take they they pride themselves on being the team leaders. They pride themselves on their work ethic being the example of that leadership for everyone else to follow. And uh, Venables backed that up by saying they are the best leaders on the defense, and. Um, I, I feel like they are. Uh, I feel like they are so good that it's almost it, it's it's almost unfair that they aren't lauded. They are. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's probably incorrect to say that they aren't noticed because everybody seems to talk about them nationally. But when you're talking about uh, a defense that lost a lot of studs, and Farrell was just talking about this a few minutes ago with me. They came into this season uh, underrated, and I talked to Dabo Sweeney about this at length yesterday. That was I call it the Deshaun is gone mm. perspective, <laughs> because when Deshaun left, everyone felt like Clemson's rank among the college football elite went with him, and these players took that personally. Trust me. And Dabo gave them T-shirts at the beginning of the year that said "Built by Clemson" on the front and "Built to Last" on the back. And that was a direct result of that national narrative that they were going to fall off in the post Deshaun Watson era. And not just Deshaun. I mean, they lost a lot of their off. They lost a tight end, center, two wide receivers, running back, all to the league. So, uh, yeah, they got a chip on their shoulder. And they, it's, uh, it's interesting. It is. Marty, these are all great coaches in the Final Four. I mean, they all have done a phenomenal oh, yeah. job with their program. Do you give Alabama, and, and I saw your interview with, with, with Saban, he's, he likes you. He's very talkative to you. He <laughs> gave you really good stuff, to be honest with you. He doesn't do that with everyone. But, but do you give Alabama an edge because of, of Nick Saban? No. Um, I, I mean, look, just look at last year. <laughs> um, I do believe that in the in, in Alabama, Clemson won. I think that uh, Alabama took advantage of some things they saw schematically to win that game. And if you look at the out-coached portion of this of, of this debate, I think the onside kick, if you guys recall, that Marlon Humphrey recovered was a direct result of watching how the game had unfolded previously on kickoff. Okay. No, I, no, I don't. I think that um, both of these men, they are, uh, they coach very differently. I was just talking about this on Sports Center. It was a really unique question that I was posed by Mike Leaves, my, my guy who coached, uh, who, uh, excuse me, anchors Sports Center. Asked me, man, you've been around these guys a lot. What similarities do they have? And they don't have very many. They uh, philosophically, they're a bit different and. I think that the, the key similarities that they do have are their unmitigated desire and unmitigated focus on building young men who will contribute, be successful beyond the game once they leave Alabama and Clemson. Um, outside, you know, but there, it's like that, it's like they're having a tough love daddy who kicks your ass all the time and and builds you up that way versus a guy who loves him up all the time. Like, Dabo's the I love you, Dad. And, but my God, they're both six. I mean, look, Saban's been in every college football playoff. Nobody else can say that. Mm. He's well, the greatest of all time, by the way. And, and, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but he oh, is. Oh, no doubt, right? He'd have to be. And, and I, I had this question I wanted to, to throw your way, and I'm glad you led right into it here. Saban would have to be crazy, right, Marty, to, to not only leave Alabama, but to go to the NFL again? 
In my estimation, yes. Yeah. Um, I think that, so l- let's break that down. People ask me all the time in airports and grocery stores and bars about this very thing, and this is just my opinion, but I think if you look at the NFL, you have salary concerns. You have, um, in, in college football, you can build your roster through hard work. You can build dominance through hard work in the NFL. There are so many constraints to doing that, right? If you can, if you're, if you're able and capable of luring 15 five-star players to the university of Alabama, then you have that right and ability to get them there. You can't go get 15 NFL superstars because you can't afford them all. Right? So, uh, I think that's the biggest difference. And that's, uh, I think that's why if I'm him, I stay at Bama. Mm-hmm. So I'm done. And everything's going to be done. Man, it's unbelievable. That guy's energy level. He looks fantastic. He's not slowing down any. Marty, is it too close to call for you as to who you think will win these, these games and play Monday for the, yeah. na- or, or play for the national championship after Monday? I have, I have my feelings on the games, but I, I, I kind of waffle them, go back and forth on it. You know, you're sitting there having cold beers with your buddies and, all the different points come out about who can do what and you expect what you expect from these games. They're just awesome games. I mean, it's the, the committee needs to get the, they deserve credit because they got it right. It's funny. One of the Alabama players that it was asked a moment ago about, you know, you got any message for Ohio state? Uh, oh yeah. We watched the big 10 championship. Uh, thank you, Ohio state. <laughs> um, but I think, I think the committee got it right. You have four excellent teams, and all the teams are going to be healthy, which is something Alabama has not had at their disposal for most of the year. Their defense, certainly their linebacking core, has just been beaten up. Dylan Moses will be out for the game, uh, so that hurts, but they're going to get three other great linebackers back, and uh, Minka Fitzpatrick will be healthy for the first time in some time. He might be the best player in college football. Marty, good one, boys. I know you're in New Orleans, and I, I just want to get one more thought from you here. This is a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, with the Rose Bowl game, is there anything behind, like, maybe, maybe the grass would slow Oklahoma down? I mean, any time I watch them in a dome or on turf, they look like a totally unbeatable force. No. I mean, that, that grass, boys, that, that grass in Pasadena is probably – nicer than any <laughs> <laughs> any turf anyway. No, I don't think that'll have any bearing on what they're doing. Well, we're looking forward to it. I did land on Alabama to win the national championship. Ooh. I just, uh, I do believe in this, in a, a healthy, a healthy Nick Saban team going into the weekend, and that's kind of my difference maker. But, uh, heck, I, I'm, I'm a college football guy. I already went to Penn State, and I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, – that we got four or two great games and then a great national championship game. And certainly I did pick my beloved Penn State Nittany Lions to beat Washington on December the 30th in the Fiesta Bowl. How many points? Oh, I put a big number 30 next something. to them, man. I be. got 30, 37. There you go. 37 <laughs> next to the Nittany Lions. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate Thanks, it, Marty. Marty. I love have it. A, have an awesome day. You too, too man. Happy New Year. You Same as well.